420, 450, 480. Sell that to the order bidder again, same one. Sold. I see you guys revving your engines. $1,600, any advances there? Sold. Sold. We're here at Zaki's today where the holiday auction is taking place and our purpose is to explore the various facets of the wine auction process. $1,100. Wine comes usually from private sources. Collectors who for a variety of reasons have decided to dispense with or to thin out their cellar. Sometimes it's debt, sometimes it's death. At $9,500, did I intimidate you? $9,500. Today's auctions attract a variety of bidders. Uh, different ages, different earning points, and a different schedule. 1177. 1177. Others are more seasoned bidders who believe that auctions represent the best opportunity to buy mature wines below the going retail rate. It's my job to get the highest price possible for the seller, but it's my duty to give the bidders the fairest possible shake. So I have to make everybody happy. It's not always easy. Seven hundred and eighty dollars sold. So I don't, there I, you go. I can't keep doing this then. Okay. <laughs> the speed at which wines are knocked down. Fifty dollars sold. Which is another term for sold is such that you'll never be able to make up your mind unless you've created a wish list for yourself prior to the sale. Lot number 474, the Morichet Ramonet, 1997, just eight bottles, $2,600 the bid. The most disciplined way to bid at auction these days is to send your bids in. The bid that you send in is your maximum price. The advantage to being in the room to attending the auction live is that you'll always be able to beat the order bid. $2,600, the order bidder starts us there. Provenance is the most important ingredient in an auction. The provenance is the history of the wine from ideally the time it's left the chateau to the time it's reached our auction house. We determine the provenance of the wine by speaking to the consigners, by uh, we actually will taste wines from their consignment, uh, uh, and we'll also often taste the lesser wines, and this, this tells us the provenance of their cellar. On the more expensive wines, we'll, we'll look for um, invoices. We'll try to trace things back as far as we can. Best case scenario is when a wine is consigned directly from a chateau or winery. If it comes from a collector who has bought the wines on release and housed them in a temperature and humidity controlled facility, odds are you've got wines in better condition. It's absolutely important not only to do the homework so far as provenance is concerned, but also insofar as the estimate, which is a high and low range that an auction house uh, determines the wine will go for. We feel it's very important to try to have those estimates be as accurate as possible to reflect the current market situation so that our sellers aren't disappointed uh, and nor are our buyers. And often we find that we're selling slightly, on average, we're selling slightly above the midpoint of our estimates. Another measure of the uh, increase in value of the wine auction is the auction index produced by the Wine Spectator, which now stands at 250 from a base rate of 100 in 1995. What that means is the average wine has doubled in value in the past 12 years. The wine market is polarized in the last three years, and this is a good thing. It means that high net worth individuals can duel at the top end over what I call trophy wines, rare Petrus, Romani Conti, Le Pain, etc. But they're not necessarily focusing on good quality everyday wines that are sold at auctions like Zaki's that run under $500. That market is much saner, sounder, and cheaper. Sold $500 to pound number 521. There's been a big turnaround in terms of buyers or collectors focus. There's more power in the market than just Bordeaux. Red Burgundy, Italy, Rhone, California exploded. Some of the really hot Burgundies are still pushing and pushing and pushing. It's amazing how quickly these prices are going up. Sold. It's here. Sold.